Hello, beautiful, amazing, fantastic world, and you, incredibly unique personality and individual you. Today, I would like to speak a little about preparing and working towards the future, here and now, and not longing for the past and past glories and heights of civilizations. The truth is, those heights of civilization reached its peak then, far in the past. After that peak, they fell away in the in clearing space to the new civilization. Of course, when the new civilization pop up, the old civilization that is decadent is side by side with the new one. That is also the reflection of the spirits of hindrance and backward spirits and the progressive spirits. I mean, not in that, not in that order. <laughs> so, the old culture that was in the past, that is no, now decadent, that we still see here, remnants of, and in many cases, people are living it still, is the backwards. That progressive, the new culture that is to cultivate for the future here and now, is the pro progressive ones. The thing is, what was, I have said this many times, what was a peak culture, 500, let's go a little farther back, 6, 700 to 1,000 to 1,500, 2,000 years ago, does not fit with our current evolution and perception of reality. In the earlier times, we weren't as distinct and precise in our seeing of details and differentiations of objects of outer senses. We have become much more aware in our outer senses than we were before. Before, we were more in our feeling world, in our inner spiritual world. So when we met each other, what was highlighted was how we felt and not what we saw. You see, now we have come to more the outside than what we feel on the inside. But to be able to spiritualize ourselves, it, we need to come from the inside spreading out. Before, be, uh, because before, inspiration and actions for conduct and upholding the culture and the guidance from above came directly from outside. It was a representative, of course, over time that spoke for the divine. But before that, the divine spoke through us, like they borrowed a body, kind of, and spoke. To, uh, when we become denser, when we got further down into physicality and our senses, we had initiates that were representations and mouthpieces for the divine. They got direct knowledge from and then spoke it out. You see, now we have gone further down. Today, we are meant to become what the spiritual beings embodied within us in earlier times, just in a new way, with our ego. Our ego is to be connected to the cosmic Christ ego. We all share the I am, but we are also all unique and have to respect that we all are an earthly being and we live side by side with many, many, many creatures and living things and also spiritual beings. The more you immerse yourself in this, the more you purify away what you thought was fun and enjoyable and you could just play away certain things you can't do anymore. So you you lose certain abilities for fun. It's nothing wrong with that though, because the love that comes from the objectivity of seeing everything, including the pain and suffering on this earth, the compassion, it's true. It is not just closing one eye to, uh, to evil and then look to good with the other and just pretending that doesn't exist. By having everything included within ourselves, we get to change it over time, slowly and actively. So we work towards the future and do not long for the past. That feeling, that feeling you have of 
Oh, uh, I I long for a home I'm not I don't have anymore. You know what that is? You know which sphere Lucifer was the ruler of in earlier times before he fell to the earth? Venus. He longs for the home of his past. Think about that. We are meant to be here on this planet, evolving with the planet. The Christ has merged with the earth, which is why he said, when you, when you eat bread and when you tread on the, on the earth, you tread on me with your feet. That means he has merged with the earth and are with the earth of development. It is pretty straightforward when they describe it like that. So when you eat bread, an earthly substance, you eat Christ. That is what he meant. It's not that we do anything wrong about it, but it is important to take these things into connotations. He has descended from the sun sphere and before that even higher. And he has finally descended down to earth. And when he died, he merged with the earth, life force of the earth, the etheric Hence, he is with us even to the ends of the earth time. That is our ego. Our ego has come into our body, just like Christ has come into earth. Which is why we now have a certain inner awareness of individuality. Before, he was the cosmic sun intelligence, which is why we worship the sun outside of us. But now he, the sun is within us. And we are meant to again merge the earth with the sun in later times. That is the picturing. The sun, the cosmic intelligence of the sun, have moved from the sun down to the earth now. That is what the symbolizing means. The ego has come into our body. It is beautiful when, I, when you truly see it in such a sublime manner. And that ego is the same ego we all have. But we are also clothed in an astral, an etheric, and a physical body around the ego. It is kind of representing the constellations around our solar system. The constellations is our body, and our solar system is our inner being, and the sun and, uh, and the earth now is our ego center. And the sun is our senses. The moon is our emotions. And earth also is our limbic system, our will. But of course, we are not purely earthly anymore. Now we have a part of the sun within us, which we have to awaken in freedom. And when you awaken it in freedom, choosing Christ as the leader, because you can look wherever you like in any kind of teachings and practices, but nothing will give you more inner love, understanding, control, and last but not least, awareness of this development as the Christ give you. He is the center. He is the sun, you see. He is within us. And everyone can awaken and strengthen, purify our being so that we can embody the Christ impulse and the Christ principle as fully as possible. From moment to moment, from year to year, day to day, second to second. Of course, we do lose ourselves here and there. But we always come back to our center. Back to our center. Back to our center. Because we do get dragged in distractions here and there. That is reality of the beautiful of the backward spirits that wants to distract us. They want us to stay stuck, stay stuck at one spot. Nothing wrong with that because they like comfort. They like to feel comfortable in what they know. So if something that is new shows up, like in the early times when N Newton came with his theories, he, oh boy, do people didn't like that. But after people got used to the idea, it became normal. So it's important to tailor spirituality to today's present consciousness, cognition, understanding, and awareness and love as i as i have said many times we are we were in the age of wisdom we are now in the age of love and consciousness love is now wisdom through love comes understanding through love comes connection through loves come opening your heart to everyone's suffering 
And when we can open our heart and see the suffering for what it is, we can sit with it and transform it and heal it through acceptance and through redemption, through forgiveness. But forgiveness can only come by you not repeating what needs to be forgiven. It is about self-control. It is about letting out and removing and shedding what does not fit anymore in our life that wants us to hold ourselves stuck and limited and in our own lane. And you see where I'm going here. Every single individual is important on this planet. And when everyone wakes up to the love, the sibling love that is on this earth, and this age of culture, global culture, we can finally start to take the karma of this earth on our shoulders and begin to heal it. There will not be a whole lot of supporters of this view of life because it is a constant task, effort and activity of healing. Every day, every moment, there is no end to it. Just like the best example I can use is a strongman. Uh, even though a strongman has quote-unquote retired and are past his peak, he will still train until his body drops more or less because that's what he knows, that's his dedication. That, and unless he can afford it, he will not stop. And I fully respect and I truly admire such willpower. You work spirituality until you take your last breath. That is what... The person I studied did before he died. He truly, he truly went on till he, his last breath. It was amazing. And such human beings are few and far between. So having resolve, dedication for the future, wanting truly, wishing to see mankind, truly awakening the Christ Son within our body, our ego that is here in our center. Our ego is not on in our head. Our head is a growth that comes out of the body. Think about this. Yes, we breathe in, but the breath goes down into our body. Our heart is in the body, pumping out blood up to the head and out to our limbs. You see, this is our center. This is where life comes from. This is just our outer senses. That is why we think this is our center. But... When I meet human beings and when I have intense interactions with them, I am aware down here because this is the intensity I like to live in. It's delicious and beautiful because it's life. The more we get to anchor ourselves in, well, truly getting to know life, truly getting to deepen oneself into whatever might inspire you in from day to day. It is important to keep oneself actively creative and forming, I call it pure thinking, where you use your whole being to think with. You, you, you are completely included in your effort of spirit, in a sense. So when I sit here, I am fully active in my whole body, dragging inspiration and building concepts and taking them out. Because you see, I don't, think in sentences I see huge pictures and these pictures funnels down through my head and kind of comes out in language it is translated that way and it is just ah, the world is so mysterious and so amazing you just can't help but smile when you immerse yourself in these kinds of teachings and it is important to see the world fully as it is that we have hindrances, spirit, backward spirits, even evil spirits. And we have the progressive, good, moral, loving, caring, nurture, uplifting, warm spirits. Which the Christ belong, with the Christ that is the leader of. And yeah, I wouldn't follow. I wouldn't follow any other. There are no other that has, uh, that has given me what he has given me. And uh, that is just my personal viewpoint of it. Because the love can't be found anywhere else. He stood for that. He stood for global, earthly, sun, cosmic love. 
It can't be denied. And you can't pretend such things. You just can't pretend such things. So, best to just work towards the future, knowing we have flaws, knowing that there are things that comes up that we are not proud of, that we are not grateful, that we are not grateful for in the moment. But once we overcome it and see back to the past and see what we learned from it, what we extracted in wisdom and understanding from it towards the world and others, is gratitude. It is about looking. It is about finding and seeing the world not only as pain and suffering and struggles, but seeing those as lessons and valuable, uh, valuable understandings. But we have to do it with dignity and grace. For as I said, the karma of the world is pretty heavy. And to take that upon our so shoulders is the first step to even take responsibility for what we have done here. By doing so, we can. So, I think this was everything. May the Divine, Christ, Holy Spirit, Father, the Hierarchy, the Ancient Masters of all, and anyone else I can include of the goods. Well, we can take those with us also. Uh, may you be blessed, protected, guided and loved by the higher powers and of Christ, Holy Spirit and Father. I love you all so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Goodbye.